we're joined by Alan Froze of Monsanto, and Alan, we're talking about uh, Roundup Ready Extendamax, new uh, herbicide from Monsanto that goes together with uh, the Roundup Ready to extend uh, Roundup and or glyphosate and dicamba so, uh, soybean system. Maybe take us through uh, what this herbicide offers producers and, and some tips for uh, for applying it. Absolutely, yeah. So Extendamax is uh, is our formulation of dicamba. Uh, it's a combination of dicamba and a pro pro proprietary information uh, called Vapor Grip, which is really all about reducing the volatility. So older formulations of dicamba were really uh, really prone to uh, uh, becoming a vapor, moving off site, and causing damage to other crops. The newer formulation, uh, Banville 2, uh, they changed the salt, really uh, changed that, really reduced the volatility. And what we've done is created our own formulation that further reduces the volatility uh, and uh, basically makes it a non-issue. The only way that you, uh, you'll actually see damage in another crop is from physical drift. So we, what we wanted to do was really just re-highlight to growers what you know what you can do to minimize drift this is uh, you know it's nothing new everybody's uh, it's on every label uh, and uh, really again just letting growers know and make make them think about what they're doing on their farms uh, and if there's anything they can be doing differently um, so several things that that you can be doing are you know lowering your boom height if you use 110 degree angled nozzles rather than 80 that allows you to have lower boom height which can reduce drift uh, spraying speed so how fast you're running your sprayer if you're going above 25 kilometers an hour the faster you go the more chances you're creating for drift um, even nozzle technology so uh, we, we're going to talk in a little bit about uh, and show uh, different nozzles and uh, the potential uh, for drift with those and that's all based on particle size so we're we're really recommending nozzles that produce partic uh, particle size of uh, very coarse to ultra coarse and there's several nozzles that can do that um, once you get down to finer particles, you, uh, you're really increasing your chance for, uh, for drift with those types of technologies. And the reason we're, we're doing that is, um, you know, reducing of drift and uh, for, com for products like Roundup and uh, Extendamax, you're not going to lose any control uh, or weed control when you go to a, uh, um, a more coarse droplet size. You will, however, if you are using uh, products that require uh, uh, contact, so the contact herbicides. Those are the ones that you can't use with a with a coarser droplet size. Well, why don't we go take a look at uh, this comparison of, of different droplet size, different nozzles. Sounds good. So what we have here is just a basic uh, spray table, really just to show, you know, you know what it might look like on a sprayer. And we've got three different nozzles running here, and they're all running at uh, 40 psi. So there's uh, a lot of growers maybe using higher than that. Uh, we're, I'll just demonstrate what pressure and nozzles can do uh, to droplet size. So what we have here is a, is a typical flat fan nozzle. Uh, and hopefully you can see that there's extremely fine particles here. And guys will use that for fungicides. Uh, you, know, hope, you know, guys may still be using this in crop, but the potential for drift with this is extremely high because the, the droplets are so small, the wind can pick them up and move them easily. What we have in the middle is an AIXR T-Jet nozzle. So it produces a coarse droplet size. So this actually, we don't technically recommend this for, uh, for spraying Extendamax on the label. Uh, so the course is much better than the fine nozzle for reducing drift, but there's still a fairly high potential for, for drift to occur uh, under even under uh, 10 to 15 kilometer hour winds. So a nozzle that is that we do highly recommend is a, is a TTI, and it's all about just because it's producing a, a coarse or a very coarse to ultra coarse droplet size. Hopefully you can see how big those droplets are, uh, and what I'll try to do here is. Um, what happens when you increase the pressure to some of these is your droplet size gets smaller and that's not a good thing. So if you're running a lot higher pressures, you're just basically uh, helping to create a situation where drift will, will, may happen more often. The benefit of using the TTIs at the end is even if you increase the pressure, they still fall within the very coarse to ultra coarse droplet size range. So you'll never actually, uh, so you'll always be in a good range for, for minimizing the drift that you see in your field. Finally then, Alan, uh, dicamba would be a little bit harder to uh, to rinse out of a sprayer tank than, than Roundup, so that's why uh, we're talking triple rinsing. Yeah, so I think everybody's pretty familiar that, uh, that Roundup can be cleaned out of a sprayer tank fairly easy. Uh, in fact, some people use Roundup to clean, uh, clean their sprayer tanks. So we really want to bring to light that dicamba 
uh, or Extendamax, uh, any of those products, they're going to be a little tougher to clean out and you're going to want to make sure that you use a, a triple rinse and follow the best practices so that you're not hurting any subsequent crops uh, after you've sprayed uh, your Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans. So, you know, the triple rinse, if you're not familiar, um, after you've sprayed, uh, you, you know, you, you clean out all the solution out of your tank, run some water through it, spray that through your nozzles. Uh, that would be sort of your first rinse. Your second rinse, uh, you drain that water from the first rinse, add in an ammo ammonia solution, run that through, clean your, uh, clean your nozzles, clean your screens, uh, run that through your boom again for a little bit, empty that out. Uh, then add a third triple rinse, run water through it again, run through the, uh, through the nozzles. Uh, the third time, make sure that it's all um, all good, and uh, and then drain that water, and that's sort of your thorough triple rinse to make sure that, uh, that you're not going to have any uh, effects in the subsequent crop. And this obviously, as we can see behind you, uh, has bad results. If absolutely, uh, if yeah. So to, uh, so right here, we uh, this was after our first rinse. We had left uh, dicamba and, and weathermax in the tank overnight in our sprayer tank. We cleaned that out. Uh, we added some water, did a rinse through the nozzles, and then um, uh, and then we sprayed that. Uh, we cleaned that out and sprayed that over here. And um, the one rinse is certainly not enough uh, with dicamba. We're still going to see a pretty bad injury. Uh, we don't uh, certainly don't recommend just to do one rinse. Uh, the, the full triple rinse is, is the best way to make sure that it's uh, that you're getting your tank clean properly. There could also be situations on farms where you have both soybeans, the RR2 the ones that we currently have access to and then the extend ones as well so there could be applications there if if we're replanting or, or those types of things and dicamba has been a, has been applied to a field Abs yeah absolutely so as we introduce these i mean we're going to try to uh, uh, change over to the extend as fast as we can uh, but there will be a few years uh, when there will be the Roundup Ready to Yield and Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans in the marketplace. And uh, dicamba, as you can see from this uh, here triple rinse demo, is that it's, it's very tough on Roundup Ready to Yield soybeans. Um, so from a you know, recropping standpoint, if you, if you uh, were to go in and spray Extendamax uh, in a pre-emerge situation uh, because you had uh, Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans, uh, if you had a crop failure, uh, you would need to make sure that you came back with uh, either Roundup Extend soybeans or some non-susceptible uh, crop. If you came back with Roundup Ready to Yield soybeans after spraying dicamba, you'd see significant crop injury, uh, probably crop loss as well. So just making sure that you're keeping track of those things while these two technologies are, uh, are in the marketplace at the same time. All right. Well, thanks for your time and thanks for explaining this, Alan. You're welcome.